Good morning. It's the first day of the new month. I thank God I repeated this message. This has been disrupted and I know that it's because something great is about to happen in your life. Today is the first day of the new month of the ninth month of the year. Nine signifies birth. It signifies bringing forth. And I pray that whatever has been, has been delayed in your life, whatever you have been, you have been, you have, you have been keeping within that has been growing that has come to full gestation period and you shall give birth to it in this new month in the name of jesus christ psalm 24 and verse 1 it says the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and every one that is dwelling therein he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood sea is always stubborn if you go to the atlantic ocean you will see it's always there are waves Flood, of course, flood is not anything good. Flood destroys, flood causes turbulence. It, it does not cut any, it doesn't allow stability. I pray that as God has founded the earth upon the floods and it has been established, I pray that your life will have stability in the name of Jesus Christ. You can see the earth. The earth is moving right now as I'm speaking to you, but we cannot feel any vibration or any shaking. There is stability upon the earth. God will bring stability to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter how the storm may rage, no matter how the flood of life may be violent, I tell you that it will not overcome you. It will not swallow you up. You will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 of Psalm 24 says, Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting gates, and be ye lifted up and let the king of glory enter. I command every gate that has been closed against you. I command gates that have been closed for generations in your lineage. I command those gates to be lifted up now in the name of Jesus Christ. I am not speaking of my own. I am the conveyor of the, of the power of God and the blessing of God to you. I am speaking as his mouthpiece. Like I said, God will never come to earth. He will make use of man. And I stand as the mouthpiece of God into your life, the prophet of God into your life. Every gate that either has been closed against you, all this while of against your family, I command that gate in the name of the Most High, who is the Lord God, with 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 above every principality and power, the Lord Jesus Christ, that those gates be open now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for these gates are opened up, that the King of Glory may enter. When God enters into your situation, that means that the situation that that is sorted out. He has settled you, and God will enter into every pending situation in your life, every challenge, every problem, every frustration in your life today. There is a turn around for it in the name of Jesus Christ. The King of Glory has entered those gates that have been shut against you, against your family, against your ancestors. Today, it is open unto you, and God enters into that situation. And command the floods to stop and open the door for your blessings uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to talk about open doors this morning. I want to talk about open door in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 9. Paul said, For a great and effectual door has been opened unto me. He said, But there are many what? Adversaries. There are many adversaries. A great and effectual door got opened unto him. It was a, it's a gate of opportunity. For him to continue to fulfill the purpose and plan for his life, it was part of the plan of God that he goes to that place, that enters through that door. But the Bible says there are many adversaries. The adversaries are humans. Satan is the one making use of those adversaries to try to shut the door. The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, it says the enemy has come to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. For God has come to give you life, and you receive that life abundantly this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The Bible says the heavens of the heavens belong to God and the earth has been given to the sons of men. God has given the heart to us to dominate, to live on. Everyone living there. So which means, and everyone living on the earth, we have a body. God is a spirit. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Uh, John chapter 4 verse 4. He says God is a spirit and those that worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. So God is a spirit. Satan also is a spirit. And the need to walk on earth. Satan wants to truncate the work of God. Satan wants to destroy what God has done. And God also is in the business of bringing to, plans, bringing to pass his plans in our lives. Let me tell you this. 
anywhere you see things bad happening, it is not God. The Bible tells us the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. It says, my thoughts towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to a hope and a future utterly unexpected end. The Bible says, surely there is an end. And the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Bible says the third John 2 says, I wish above all things that ye prosper and be good that even as so prosper. So God wants us to do well. He wants us to prosper. God's plan for us, his counsel for us, his purpose for us on earth is for us to do well. They have purpose of good, of accomplishments, of lifting, of relevance, of being blessed to become a blessing. And so anything that is contrary to that is from the devil. And so it's Paul said there are many adversaries. In the book of Second Corinthians, chapter two, verse eleven, he said, "Let's." Paul was speaking again. He said, "Let Satan take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Let's take and Satan take advantage of us, as God has opened His own door. Satan is opening the door to shut the door God has opened for you. Can you see? And He will make use of people, like I said." Satan is a spirit, he wants to use people. God is a spirit, he will use people. So the adversaries are the people that most times we focus on. That's why you see people say people should die. People should do this. If they die, it's a spirit that is walking in them. That same spirit will leave the dead body and go and walk in another one to walk against you. Satan is the one that is after your life. Satan is the one that wants to take advantage of you. Proverbs chapter 9 and 19 verse 2. He said, it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Our lack of knowledge to understand what the enemy is. But that what tells us here, he says, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Second Corinthians 11. Lest he take advantage of us. And so, what does he do? He makes use of his own door. Job chapter 5 verse 12. He said, he catch the craft of his own device and support his hands for performing his enterprise. He's a crafty person. He devises things. And what he does is that he makes use of people. He makes use of, of weaknesses in our lives. You can see some patterns in your family. When you look through your family, you will see some patterns of weaknesses, of, of, of iniquity, of sin. There's no family that doesn't have that. So if I, even in some family, if you don't if you don't elicit that their advice, they will say you are not a true son of your father. Some of it is immorality, polygamy bad things some of it is arrogance is pride you see some people they said they descend from the kingship they said that uh -uh, you need to exercise pride arrogance and they believe it's an open door of the enemy that's why some people never get into king will never ascend to the throne what he tries to do is to make use of that particular vice to stop you if you remember god said uh the bible says the hand of god is not sure that i cannot save isaiah 49 neither is it it's this, it's this answer that he cannot deliver. He said, but your iniquity has, is standing between you and his redemption and his salvation, saving you and bringing to pass the open door that he has for you. What Satan does is that he wants to bring up iniquity. He wants you to do something that will put a stop to that and bring you to, to come into collision with God. Once there is sin, there is a blockage. So what he does is that he looks at the pattern. The same thing your father did that stopped him from getting to where he ought to have gotten to. They said that there's so much potential. The same thing he wants to carry out in your life. So family, it is anger. It is anger. Some people, people even say in the Yoruba palace, I don't know in some other tribes, they say that he's a bastard that will see anger that will not get angry. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm sorry for you. Anger. Some people, it is immorality. It is vice. Look at David. Look at David, as good as David was, as wonderful as he was, as he was a man after God's heart, yet he fulfilled the counsel of God. But what he went through, acts of that unbridled passion for women. And if you look at it, it seemed that if he was even born out of wedlock, because when he had the issue with Bathsheba and he had that son that died eventually out of sin, he said he was formed in, in his iniquity in his mother's womb. If he was from in iniquity in his mother, which means that he was born, he was he was conceived out of the legality of marriage. No wonder if you trace what happened to him, he was the only person that was not brought forth when they wanted to seek for the king. And so when he had that issue, he remembered that, is this not the same pattern? My father had me out of wedlock, 
Look at me now. Look at what I have done. It's the same pattern. Let me tell you, he did not enjoy his family. That, 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 that scene almost destroyed him. Some people say they want to be like David. I don't know. Maybe you, you should not say you want to drink of the cup which we drank. Because he hoped, because that door. He had, a, he had many wives. His son had 300 wives and 700 concubines. Solomon. He multiplied it. And because of that, Solomon was not named in the hall of fame of those who had faith and those who are recognized in heaven as having done great experts on earth, despite all his wisdom. In Hebrews chapter 11. Can you see? The same vice, the open door there. The Bible says, and Solomon loved strange women. Solomon loved strange women. His father started it, Solomon multiplied it. May you not multiply evil in the name of Jesus Christ. He used open doors. He used your weakness. Some people, it is lying. Some people, so many things. You, you alone can understand what I'm saying right now. Because it is diversified. And then, he wants to shut the door. The and his greatest weapon today is strife, envy. You know what happens when God wants to do something new in your life and you begin to see the pressure? Some of you, like I said, women may start coming to visit you. They may start calling you. Some things that normally you, are, you, you, you know that it's a weakness in your life will start coming forth. And you know, the Bible tells us in the book of, uh, of Psalm 91, it says that it will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Let me tell you, devil is the fowler. He brings about a snare, a trap. Snare of the fowler means a trap of the one. You know, if the fowler, what he does is to catch bread birds and animals setting a trap. And when they set that trap, they put something that will be attractive to them. Sin is a mocker. Also, like wine is a mocker. Sin is deceitful. And some people, they cherish it. They garnish it. They cut it. But yet, that is what is stopping you from manifesting the glory of God in your life. That is what is stopping Ogore from shining. And so, Satan will always start to open that door. Immediately he knows that God has opened a great and effectual door to you. Tonight, this money, you will shut that door in the name of Jesus Christ. The greatest weapon I've noticed is strife. Envy. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 3 verse 16, it said, wherever there is strife and envy, he said, wherever there is strife, is, he said, all manners of evil, all manners of confusion and evil is there. Wherever there is strife, wherever there is evil, the Holy Spirit cannot walk there. God will not walk there. The angels of God will not walk where there is strife and division and schism. If you look at what happened at the time of Babel, God said, let us cause division amongst them. Let them misunderstand each other and then they will not be able to achieve it. The same, that is what the devil does. Once he does that, he sends the Holy Spirit away. It makes him to be quiet. It makes the angels of God not to be effective to carry out the plan of God for your life. And therefore, you should have voice strife. The Bible says, pursue peace with one another and holiness without which no man shall see God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. And holiness without which no man shall see God. If you pursue peace and holiness without no man. So when there is peace, God will show forth. And it will show up in your life. So this is the greatest weapon of the enemy. Strive. That is why you see sometimes, once you see some people, they will bring up bad past issues in your life. They will bring up dead issues in your life. They will bring up sin that God has already covered. They begin to talk about it suddenly. And for no, for no, for no reason at, at all, some people will provoke you. They try to do things that make you angry. You see, once you are angry and, 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 and you fight and you say things that you don't want to say, Inadvertently, you shut the door or you delay the blessing of God. And that is why we are not ignorant of his devices. I'm opening your eyes today. Be not ignorant of it. When you see such things, just be focused. Now, can you see what he said in that James chapter 3 verse? He said, all manners of evil. He said, and confusion. When you are confused, you are distracted from the assignment. When you are confused, you are distracted from where you are going. And once you are distracted, uh, you can be derailed. Can you see that? And so when such things come, as much as possible, do not reply. As much as possible, do not strive. As much as possible, do not join them. Because you have the knowledge. You already know that is the devil that is setting a trap to delay you and to stop the blessing of God from coming to pass in your life. So you refrain. And that's why you see sometimes people will not talk. They will just keep focused on where they are going. 
be ye steadfast, immovable, always abandoning the grace of God. Be focused on God and don't let the enemy catch you off guard. And so, what do we do? What do we do when all these things happen? Uh, the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 14 says, About my knees unto God, the, uh, the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is name. In verse 16, he said, That may grant unto me according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might in my inner man. You need strength in your inner man. It's your spirit man. You need strength of the Holy Spirit. Sir. When the Holy Spirit strengthens you, you will begin to receive the fruit of the Spirit and you will not be able to swallow the bait of the enemy. Jude 20 says, Beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in tongues. When you begin to build up your spirit man, it takes possession of the flesh. It takes possession of the flesh. Then you cannot be lured. You can, you will have discernment. You can be able to discern that this thing is not of God. This thing will shut the door against me. I will not partake of it. So, and most of the time, the devil comes. He will not come with people that cannot affect you. It can come with your wife. It can come with your children. It can come with your friend. It can come with your bosses at work or your colleagues. He will want to make use of them. It is when good things are happening. Sometimes you have been touted for promotion, then suddenly you begin to see it will bring in a new boss that will hate you uh, for no reason at all, or your colleague who is fight who is striving with you will just start something and they will start cooking lies against you. In your family, they do such too. They will just see strife. You just see things that you did not remember again, they will bring it up. Things that have been said to somebody will just screw it up somewhere. You will see it to the public gear. Even, even you will see people of, of, of recognition who have already attained too much. Suddenly, there will just be a scandal that will bring up on them. Something that was done 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that has been forgotten. The person has changed, has done something, but is the devil at work. God forbid us being an instrument yielded unto the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And so today, God has opened the door. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7 to verse 8, Jesus said to the church at Philadelphia, Say, For I know your works. He that holds the key of David, he that opened the door that no man can shut. And he that opened the door that no man can shut. He said in verse 8, He said, I know thy works. Behold, I have said before thee an open door. God has said before you an open door today and you will enter into it in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I've said before you an open door that no man can shut. No matter how the devil is raging, you shall bring forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 9. Je the Lord was speaking. I said, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Shall I cause to bring forth and not and shut the womb? So God says he's the one that will bring you to the place uh, that you will give birth this month. Uh. He said, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. Uh. God says he's the one who has been working it, this pregnancy of his blessing in your life, this pregnancy of, of an open door, this pregnancy of your lifting, this pregnancy of promises that have been aging, that has been long overdue. This month, uh, he will cause it to be brought forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh. He said, shall I cause her to bring forth, to come to the place of birth, and you will abort it? He said, no way. He said, will you open the womb, that you, the, 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 the son, that the blessing should come out and shut it? He said, no way. It shall not be shut. It shall not be shut against you. Like I said, he has lifted up that gate, and you shall enter into it in the name of Jesus Christ. Son. A great and effective door has been opened unto you, and God says, I will help you to give birth to it. God says, this month, it shall not fail you. It shall not be aborted. It shall not come out to steal birth. It shall come forth, and you shall rejoice, and everyone and the heart shall rejoice with you. And people shall say, this is the Lord's dream, and it's marvelous in our eyes. I congratulate you, and I say that the Lord God Almighty, who has caused his cancer to come to Path will cause God pass will cause you to rejoice. For the Bible speaks in the book of Zephaniah chapter 3, it said, For the shout of a king is in their midst. The shout of a king is in your home this month, and we shall hear the testimony. God bless you, God be with you, I love you, and be expectant because your expectation will never be cut short. Philippians 1 6 says, He who has begun the good work is faithful enough to complete it, and the text time to complete it is now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Goodbye.